And the website, markstevens.net. The radio show I do is called the No State Project. It is live every Saturday from 4 to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1 to 4 here on the West Coast of North America. And uh, just so I can I think this is funny, the 50 shades of G'day. Uh, it is actually Sunday morning in Australia. Uh, big congratulations to uh, our buddy Keith uh, and uh, to Leo for standing up to the uh, psychopaths there in Australia. But uh, we'll get to that on another another video, and I'll post an update of that. But uh, the radio show is on LRN.FM. You can also listen to it right here at MarkStevens.net. I, um, and, yeah, government indicted. We did have a beta release, and the formal release should be here any day now, uh, definitely within a few weeks. So uh, definitely come back and check that out here at markstevens.net. And what I want to discuss here today is about the professional thieves and liars called the Internal Revenue Service, which anybody who's had any contact with these people know, and I use the word people, uh, well, vaguely. Uh, anyway, they're, they're, uh, they're human in a biological sense. But I want to talk about these professional liars, one in particular, or a few in particular, uh, Jeffrey Wagner of the Bloomington office in Minnesota, here in North America. And uh, what he did was he, uh, he falsely accused me, in person, of making a frivolous argument. And uh, basically what I had done is what I always do, I was, I was asking for evidence his constitution and sacred writ the united states code of uh, or federal law woo uh, just evidence that it actually applied to a friend that i was helping he dodged it because this is what they're doing when you ask them for evidence they dodge it by lying saying it's a frivolous argument and they think that by saying it like that they can avoid having to answer the question they're liars. That's what they do. It's their government, uh, you know. And well, there is no government. They're just people. But they're people who call themselves government. So what I want to do is uh, I want to suggest that when they do these lies, which is what something I've already started, uh, not just point out that they're lies, but go into their sacred writ, and uh, you can get this at uh, I guess Wanacle You could just you could just uh, do a search for Title eighteen, Section one thousand and one. And that is statements or entries generally. And it says here, whoever in any manner within the jurisdiction of the executive, legislative, or judicial branch of the government of the United States, knowingly and willfully huh, makes any materially false, fictitious, or fraudulent statement or, misrep or representation. And we see here that they should be fined and imprisoned not more than five years. So even though I don't see anywhere here where it says felony, if you're going a year uh, into, if you're going to prison for more than a year, that's a felony. That's pretty bad. So I would imagine that the Internal Revenue Service falls within, uh, at least they're going to claim that within the jurisdiction of the United States government. So. I uh, want to look here. So we know a false statement. It's not perjury, but it's just a false statement. Perjury uh, is an even worse felony. I think you can get uh, five to ten years for that. But uh, if we look at what frivolous is, you go to, this is the lawdictionary.org. I believe it's supposed to be from Black's Law Dictionary. Not that that matters. Because, you know. But uh, it's a fairly good definition of frivolous. An answer or plea is called frivolous when it's clearly insufficient on its face and does not controvert the material points of the opposite pleading and is presumably interposed for mere purposes of delay or to embarrass the plaintiff. Well, i got to take issue with that. The plaintiff should be embarrassed if you're asking for evidence and they don't have it. That's kind of the way things work. Be honest about it. But, uh, but what's important here is insufficient on its face. But I also like the definition because it, 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 you know, it's a little clearer here in Ballantyne's Law Dictionary of frivolous on page 503. Uh, this is uh, frivolous, so clearly and palpably bad and insufficient as to require no argument or illustration to show the character as indicative of bad faith upon a bare inspection as a pleading argument, motion, or objection. Now, first of all, asking for the evidence somebody relies on is never indicative of bad faith. Refusing to answer the question what evidence you rely on, that is indicative of bad faith. That is indicative of not having any evidence and bringing a false claim. 
lying and and in in response to a question, what evidence do you rely on? Saying, well, that's a frivolous argument. That's indicative of bad faith. So we see here that if we're asking for evidence, it's not even an argument. But let's just say, we'll give him a pass and say that based on my experience with Jeffrey Wagner of the Bloomington IRS office, by asking him directly several times over the course of about six to eight weeks, whether by phone or by mail, asking him directly, what evidence do you rely on to prove the Constitution and Code apply? And he doesn't have it. He's pretty, you know, the fact not appearing is presumed not to exist. So what Jeffrey did was he handed a friend of mine this 80-page document. So if this printed out, this truth about frivolous tax arguments, it's an, I have a hard copy because the supervisor sent it to me. It is, uh, let's see what we got here. It, uh, it, it, it's a hard copy, about 80 pages. It's, it's quite extensive. Uh, you'll notice when you go through here, this is why I'm going to show that Jeffrey made a uh, materially false, fictitious, fraudulent statement or representation. Because he claimed that asking for evidence or even saying that he had no evidence was a frivolous argument and was in this document. So, like any rational person would do when I was there at the office in Bloomington, Minnesota, I asked him to cite the, where in this document it was. Because it's really nice. I mean, it's, it's, paid, it's, got, it's all numbered. And they have, you see what they've got here? They got the letter A, then there's one, two, then it goes down, and you got B and C. So if it is in here, he can just go and he can cite it. Well, he refused to cite it because he can't. Why? Oh, that's right, because he made a materially false, fictitious, or fraudulent statement. So I want to just point out, if you go through this entire document, and I have done that, every single one of them, and you could just go to irs.gov and you can get this yourself, Every single one of these is an issue of law. None of these are issues of fact because anybody with half a brain in their head understands that issues of fact cannot be settled by quoting an opinion. You see, opinions are opinions. Facts, facts. And so, uh, stare decisis is for settling issues of law, not issues of fact. It's just every case is fact-specific, and if you don't agree to that, you need to go take a basic lesson in, in logic and, and reason. Uh, well, actually, go back to third grade. Uh, I'm not going to spend any more time on that. People who are honest and, and have half a brain in their head understand the difference. But I want to point out here, uh, this is one of them. This is contention number three. Uh, let me see real quick. This was uh, uh, subsection C. It's number and it's number three, taxpayer is not a person as defined by the Internal Revenue Code, thus is not subject. That's an interpretation of law, not an issue of fact, issue of law, not the same thing. So to say that asking for evidence is a frivolous argument is just a materially false, fictitious, and fraudulent statement. What the IRS and what these criminals do is they all, look, it's a dodge. You ask them a direct question, what evidence do you have to prove that your constitution and code apply to me? Or can you confirm that there's evidence proving your constitutional laws apply to me? And what do they do? What do they do? They lie. They dodge. They say this is ridiculous. So that's a frivolous argument. Well, I say, just like what I've done with Jeffrey, and I've called him on the phone, call him on it. And I told him, you're lying, and the only way that you'll be able to prove otherwise is to cite it. Just give me the page number, Jeffrey. He can't. I've spoken with District Counsel John Schmidt deal, and his counsel cannot provide it because it's not there. There's nowhere in this document, and if you're a critic and you think I'm full of crap... You're more than welcome to come on the No Stay Project. Find where there's an issue of fact in here that asking for evidence is a frivolous argument. Find it in here. Give me the sub, the, the letter and subsection, and the page number, and I will, uh, I will publicly announce, you know, announce it and show that I was wrong. But you'll be able to do what Jeffrey and his supervisors cannot do because I spoke to his supervisors; they couldn't. Uh, Brenda Jones is one in particular. I asked her to send it to me and sign it. Show me where in the document. All she did was send me another copy of this stupid document. I said, I already have this. 
The reason why they can't cite it is because it's not there. So I filed a complaint with TIGDA, which is the Treasury Inspector General for Tax Administration. I suggest you do this also because they, even if they have to process it, it's got to be a pain in the neck and cost them part of the budget. And uh, the, the agents can't like having their supervisors having complaints filed on them. And their supervisors aren't going to like it. But you go and you call each one. You get them to try to get them to do the right thing. Point out that they're lying through their teeth. Ask them to cite the alleged frivolous argument when these criminals can't do that. You say, you either, you either back off and leave me alone and show me the evidence, or I'm going to file a complaint with you. So I went with TIGDA, the Treasury Inspector General, and filed a complaint against Jeffrey Wagner at the Bloomington IRS office. And a Jeff from the St. Paul office called me and asked me if there was any additional evidence, which I did send some additional evidence because I gave Jeffrey another opportunity. And he asked me on the phone, this is a few days ago, he asked me what, why I was asking these questions, why I'm even bothering, what do I hope to accomplish. I said, well, I'm giving you one last good faith chance to do the right thing because I'm looking at this knowingly and willfully so that if it comes out, Later, and he's asked, and this is what I, you know, that he can't claim it was an honest mistake. He was given every opportunity over the last month or so to do the right thing. So I had to tell this Treasury Inspector General investigator, this is one of the easiest felonies that you could be handed. All you've got to do is go to Jeffrey Wagner and his supervisors and just ask them to tell you what page number it is that asking for evidence proving the constitutional laws apply is a frivolous argument. Just cite it, and the whole thing goes away. But if you can't, if you cannot get an answer to that question, you've got all the evidence you need to prove that Jeffrey Wagner and his supervisors and District Counsel John Schmidt deal are criminals and that they have uh, made materially false, fictitious, and fraudulent statements or representations because that's all the IRS is able to do. It's a gang of killers, thieves, and liars for the bigger liars called the United States government. And uh, I, I believe that what we should be doing is filing these complaints and making things as difficult as possible. Call them on every single lie that they're telling you because almost every word that comes out of their mouth from the Internal Revenue Service is a lie. They are professional interaction with people called the go calling themselves the government, especially the IRS. If you just assume that every single word coming out of their mouth is a lie, you'll be very well prepared and you'll be able to handle yourself and you'll be able to prove very easily. And it doesn't take much more than when you're asking for evidence and they say that's a frivolous argument, it doesn't take much more than asking them to cite it. You tell them, I've been to your website, I have the 80-page document, what page is it on, what's the subsection, and you'll have all the evidence you need that they are lying to you. And I'm Mark Stevens. Uh, the website is markstevens.net. And if you have evidence to the contrary, if you can show, then please, the radio show is live. We do not screen calls. Live every Saturday from 4 to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on lrn.fm. But you know what? <laughs> like usual, I'm not going to be holding my breath that anybody's going to be pr producing evidence and showing that the con that asking for evidence is a frivolous argument. And I'm certainly not holding my breath for anybody to call with evidence that the Constitution law, uh, the codes, uh, actually apply to us, especially uh, to myself or people that I work with. But you're more than free. Welcome also to call the show any Saturday that we are live.